The first rider we've joined today here at uh, Astra is uh, Steinus Lund, Danish rider, uh, Danish 500 sidecar rider. Steinus, back in the UK again for 2017. Yeah, I love it here in the UK. I want to go here every year because it's all the people here is really lovely and I'd just love to come to England. Now, you obviously last season competed in the uh, Super Series. Um, how did last season's Super Series go for you? Uh, some of the rounds were good, some of them were bad. We're hoping to do it better this year because obviously in ninth, I can't remember 9th or 10th place last year, it's not good enough for me. Now we don't get many Danish uh, 500cc sidecar riders, and obviously, uh, but there are a couple around. What's the scene like in, uh, in Denmark for, as far as sidecars go? Because we don't really hear a lot about it. No, we don't. right now we're only two teams in Denmark and, and we don't have races in Denmark because obviously we're not enough people and we only have one track in Denmark and we're only allowed to train on that, not, don't have, can't do any races. And is there any plans for you to? Uh, is there any plans for you to uh, somehow bring the sport to the Danish uh, people? Perhaps to get a few more riders involved in, in Denmark in the future. We're always trying that in the Danish Super League in the Speedway. We try to to get to to many races there and do some presentation racing. But it's it's hard when you only have two teams because everyone wants to see four sidecars on a speedway track. Sure. So, but we're really glad to have you here. Obviously, and uh, it gives us an international flavour for the Super Series. Uh, so, going forward into 2017, obviously we've got the Super Series, and you're competing in Wimborne for the uh, the European EU. I don't know yet. Uh, we have to wait two weeks to see how it goes. Either it's me or it's Mike. My old passenger started riding himself, so it's it's a bit of a rivalry there. Well, that's good. A rivalry's good. Yeah, it is. So, uh, so with the Super Series, what are your hopes for this season, Super Series? Where do you re where do you feel that you know? What's your hope for the the season? Definitely a top five overall. And uh, you've been. I've seen you go out for practice here at Swingfield. Is it the first time you've been to Swingfield? No, I've been here for that's second time. First time was three years ago, okay. and track is lovely. Yeah, it looks real nice for the for the day. It's a huge circuit, but obviously you're used to that racing in uh, racing abroad and on the continent. Yeah, we're used to the big circuits. Uh, normally in Norway and Sweden, when we ride there, it's on a horse track, and that's 11, 1200 meters long. So, but that's too long. So this is uh, minute compared to what you're used to. <laughs> well, good luck today, Steiners. I hope it all goes well, and uh, obviously it'd be great to see you over here in the UK as much as possible. Yeah, thank you very much. We've now caught up with the uh, current tw uh, well, the 2016 Super Series champions, Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Brilliant season for you last year, Mitch. Yeah, it was really good. We had um, you know, good results in the Super Series. Well, the first round of the Super Series didn't really go our way. Um, and that was at Astro on the other track, and we struggled and struggled, and we just couldn't get a set-up all day. And then we had a gearbox problem in the B final, which then stopped us going to the A final. But um, you know, we learned a, lot of, learned a lot of lessons from that. Um, 
and you know we went on to have a you know a stellar year really um, home and abroad um, you know really really enjoying it you know now uh, obviously you came into the sport having done many years of solo racing and now you're onto the sidecar and um, you got good at it very very quickly uh, do you feel this season there's a bit more pressure than before because obviously before you were learning the trade and getting into it this season you've really established yourselves as the one of the top crews so are you feeling the pressure or is it still just a matter of enjoying your racing no not feeling any pressure really I've been doing it too long to, to be worried about other people um, but for us you know we're almost racing ourselves because we want to win and we want to win so bad it doesn't matter who we're against it doesn't matter you know whether it's you know European riders or English riders you know we respect them all um, but we want to beat them all now, obviously, uh, Paul, from your point of view, uh, last season, again, you've, you've ridden on the 500 chairs a bit longer than Mitch has, um, but you've really sort of come into your own now, so you must have really enjoyed 2016. Uh, going into 2017 then, Paul, what's, uh, what are you hoping for this season? Obviously, Mitch is, is out to win it. What sorts of things are you aiming to win this season? We just want to progress on from, from where we ended last year, really. Um, like I say, we, um, we had some podiums last year, which were good, um, but we were both still learning, Mitch with the bike and me. Um, me again with Mitch. Um, it's, it's always different riding with a different, you know, rider. Um, but we've we've gelled really quickly, um, and it's kind of, you know, it is that kind of like unwritten kind of. There's no walkie-talkie. We don't talk to each other, but you know, we just seem to know what each other needs on the bike, and you know, we can feel what the bike's doing. And and all, all we want to do this year is just just progress and, and take it, you know, on further and further. Um, and as Mitch said, you know, we go out there every race um, to win. But, you know, it's kind of, you know, we, we want to enjoy it as well. Yeah, now just picking up on a couple of points you made there, Paul. Obviously, Mitch, having been a solo rider for, for years and then turning to sidecars, did it surprise you? are always somebody that points out, we were just saying before we started to roll, Mitch always points out the role of the passenger. Do you, uh, did it surprise you just how involved the passenger is when you get on to ride one of these things? In all honesty, I don't really know what he does. You know, well, I don't. You know, a, lot of, a lot of drivers come from being a passenger. So there's, an, you know, an inherent knowledge of what the passenger does. I really haven't got a clue what Paul does. I've just got to do what I've got to do, and I trust and rely on Paul to do what he's got to do. And that's the, the beauty of, of, a, of a good team and, and getting good results is the bike's good, the passenger's good, and I've got to try and be as good. Um, and, and when all that works, then, you know, we can beat anybody. OK, so now we're looking at 2017. Obviously, the big three must be for you guys, the, uh, the Super Series to, maintain, uh, to retain that title, the British Championship, which you narrowly missed out on last year, and, of course, the, uh, the European final, which is coming up in, uh, in a few months as well. Yeah, you're right. All three would be lovely. We're not greedy. You know, if someone deserves the Super Series and, and outrides us, then fair play, you know. And, you know, that, happened, you know, that can happen. Um, the British final... Um, yeah, we were second last year in our first attempt, which you know, which was amazing. Um, it's at Ledbury this year, um, and you know we like the track. We've got good, we've had good results at Ledbury, so we're looking forward to it. But that all comes down to one race. You know, you do you, you have your your selections from the grading list, and then you go and race the meeting, and the top six crews go in there to a four lap sudden death final. So quite literally, you can't predict it. Anything can happen. You know a puncher or anything you know someone's day can be ruined and someone's day can be made and that you can't think any more about it until you get there um, with the european um we're looking forward to it uh it's not really on our kind of track but we've you know we've been practicing on the speedway uh we've got a lot of contracts in uh europe in may um and we're racing against those top guys of william and venus and brand offer um you know because i'm i'm trying to learn from them you know, I'm racing with them to learn from them to up my game. You know, and Tyak, we want to go there, we want to make the final. You know, it's a, it's a big ask. You know, we're, we are an unknown to everyone else, which, is, which I quite enjoy. <laughs> um, you know, for long, though. Well, they still don't know what I'm going to do. You know, but the thing is, like, I mean, I, I, and something I've got to try and get out of a little bit is I'm riding it like a solo, which in some, some circumstances, creates problems because I'm on the wrong lines but in other circumstances you know we don't follow anyone if we're if we're behind someone we'll tr I'm trying to pass them whether it's up the inside around the outside I'm not going to not going to give up um, and we'll part you know we'll try and pass them following someone just to get a place isn't you know it's not in our book mm. so so hopefully it makes it's exciting for us 
you know, we enjoy a good race. Uh, hopefully the people that are racing with us enjoy a good race and, and more importantly, the, the crowd enjoy a good race. Wow. That's uh, great to get both of your thoughts, obviously, on the on things. Obviously, we're all delighted at how the Super Series has, has got going, um, and you guys have been a fundamental part of that. So, um, with all your professional outlook on the sport and the way that you present yourselves, and yeah. so we wish you the best. I'm sure we'll catch up with you again this season, but we wish you all the best for today, and wish you all the best for the rest of the season. That's that's really good of you, and I just hope um, you know everyone has a good, safe days racing, you know, in all the classes, because you know we're a big family. Thank you very much. Mitch Godden and Paul Smith. Well, having caught up with Mitch Godden and Paul Smith, the current Super Series champions, we've now got the, uh, the British champions, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Uh, Josh, you've been out for practice on this enormous Astra circuit, well, enormous for British grass track. Um, how have you found it so far? I find it great. I love coming here. I know I can normally do well here. And last time we was here, I've maxed out. And that's so how I can carry on the speed that I know I can bring round in. By the end of the day, it's a great result for us. Now you know uh, you obviously know how to ride a long track, having done plenty of it out in out on the continent. Um, but last season was a was a good season in British Championships uh, perspective. But the Super Series you missed out on. So obviously something that's something you want to correct for this season. Well, I didn't miss out on it. Like every round I've done, I won, and I was I think I was top point scorer in both two of them. I done, and I think I was third in the first round. It's just when their meeting got cancelled and. I already had commitments, I just couldn't change it, you know. You know, if you sign a contract, that's that's what you got to do. So, yeah, I, I won my rounds, you know. I know what I had done last year was good enough for me. And to me, I'd rather win a British title than, not disrespect, but I'd rather win my British than a Super Series to me. So, yeah. So this season, obviously, uh, are you planning on doing all of the rounds for the Super Series? As long as the series stays as they are, because I've put my meetings around it now. So, yeah, if it does it, we'll be doing all of them. And hopefully I can carry on what I've done last year in the Super Series and win every round and be on top. Well, you've, uh, you guys have won, the uh, obviously, the European Championship. Uh, you've won the British Championship, so Super Series would be nice as well, Liam, especially with your British Masters titles as well. Uh, you must be something you're keen to win. Yeah, like Josh says, though, we won the rounds that we did. Um, and we're quite capable of winning it. It's just as long as it stays the same and doesn't interrupt with uh, European commitments and things like that, then happy days. We, I don't see why it can't be ours. Well, you, go, you both sound real confident in yourselves this season, which is obviously really good. We've got the uh, European final at Tayek coming up. We've spoken to, uh, to Mitch about that, um, and he's just kind of... Um, He's happy to be a part of it. He wants to get top six, but uh, what are you? What are your aims for the uh, the European this year? Well, you go there to win it. You don't. To me, you don't go there to just play ball with them. Do you? There's no point in turning up. To me, I come here to win every meeting. I go to win. That's the way I'm going there to see it. I want to go there and win all my title back. I know it's going to be hard. It's the European final. Everyone, you're going to have all the top twelve cycles, but I'm going there to win it and feel the confidence from coming off of last year. I can do it, you know, I've beaten William, I can beat them all, I've not, it's just on the day hopefully everything goes right and we can bring it home again. Just finally, after uh, after obviously winning that British title at High Easter, um, since then have you felt like, because obviously the whole of Europe is watching, looking at you then, did you feel any pressure towards uh, re retaining the title? Obviously we didn't get to see you retain the title the following year because of tragedy, but um, do you feel now when you enter European meetings there's that extra pressure of you being European champions? The first year when we won it, I, I might have had more than Liam to me, like, you're, you're European, you're the best, so they expect the best kind of thing. You know, it's a race, you can't always go out and perform week in, week out. Everyone has their bad luck in that, and like, and like we saw it with William last year, when he won it, he started having problems or he weren't winning, and it probably doesn't get you, like, if you ask Yannick the same, you know, it's probably, hard, especially in European title in the world, that's a lot of pressure, and it's, but if you don't think about it, if you, you know, you've got people that just don't worry about it, and then yeah, it's, but to me, I'm not the European title no more, like I've won it, I'm not the gaining, so there's no pressure on me, you know, I can just turn up and do my business and then walk away. Well, it's good to hear that you're, uh, you've got such a positive outlook on European. With yourselves and Mitch already in that final, it's going to be uh, some of the best hopes of Britain for a few years, I think. So good luck with that. Good luck with today. Hope it all goes well. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys all do battle later on. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown.
Right, we've just made a quick skip over the pits from Josh Goodwin's camp to Gareth Winterburn's camp in the 1000 cc sidecars and Liam Brown joins us again, he's doubling up once again. I don't know how he does it myself, but we're here with Gareth Winterburn now, his driver. Gareth, you've been out for practice, how did it feel? Uh, yeah, it felt good. Uh, there's a couple of slick bits and a couple of driving bits, but yeah, and it's a nice big track and uh, I, li I like a nice big track. Now, obviously, uh, just looking back at 2016, you again missed out on that Masters. That must be really killing you now. Yeah, but I have plenty of time and I have no rush. I'm just, if I just go out and enjoy riding, it's good enough, isn't it? Well, that's good to hear, and obviously, you, like you said, you have got plenty of, uh, plenty of years ahead of you. I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, no dad this weekend? No, no, he's, uh, he's mourning again that we're too busy and can't get down, but he just needs to pull his head out of the game and, and get away a little bit more, I think. So obviously last season, uh, yourselves and uh, Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe, they were, you were the ones to catch all season. Uh, have you made any changes over the winter to uh, get the edge? Uh, bits and bats, but no drastic really. Uh, just same old, same old really. Just a couple of alterations where you think you you might gain a bit, but you just never know until you get out of here, do you? Well, no, I guess you never know until you start measuring up with other people. And, and Liam, obviously, back on with Gareth again this season. You happy with... Uh, with how the thousands going as well as the 500? Yeah, yeah, happy with both of them. Really, it's like the thousand. They, they are good to get out, and it, I think a lot of it's that initial bit of speed and noise, and it gives you that big, bit more of a rush than the 500, really. And I'm guessing that's why you've never been able to decide between the two, and you just do both. Yeah, just keep both going. Keeps everybody happy then. And <laughs> keeping everybody happy. Well, uh, you'll be keeping us happy today by uh, putting in a good performance, I'm sure. Good luck with today, guys. You looked fantastic in practice. Um, I'm sure it'll go well for you. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Gareth Winterburn and Liam Brown. So we couldn't uh, couldn't start racing without having an interview with our current European grass track champion, James Shanes. Back on ground that has got happy memories for you, James. Yes, yeah, a lot of memories here. You know, it was a very emotional day. You know, last year it was a very up and down day. So to walk away with that title was a, was a massive dream come true. It's you know it's another day, another meeting for me. So you know, see how it goes and have a bit of fun. Really. Now, obviously, that track, uh, the track today is uh, in the same location as the track that was used for the European final last year. Um, you've been out in practice. Is it much the same? It's a little bit tighter, and it's quite happy to say I've got too much speed, you know, which is a very rare thing to say. But, you know, we're getting it sorted. We've made a few changes again, so hopefully we can get it dialed in for the first ride and well, get it dialed in for the final, and that's what really matters today. So. So obviously at that European final last year, uh, Yannick de Jong, he was the main competition and he crashed out in that final controversially. Uh, you've had a, since had a few races against him. Last weekend in Bulkbrug, uh, you raced against him and he got the better of you. Back in British uh, territory today. So how are you feeling about taking on Yannick again? Yeah, you know, it's, you know we've, got, we've got that bit of rivalry going. Bulkbrug was a very, a very typical Dutch track. Um, it took me a long time to get dialed in. In the final, I, I hit the fence in the first corner, come down the back straight, so it, it messed me up a little. But, but you know it's, it's it's what it is you know Jan beats me the day beats me the day but you know I know I've got the satisfaction I've got the title for a little bit longer until we go to the final where it's gloves off again so yeah so obviously since turning your uh, so since coming into adult racing you've had two Masters titles you've had that second in the European then you won it last year uh, so what are your hopes for this season 2017 well much of the same as last year really you know I want to try and retain my Masters title you know it'd be nice to retain the European title again but I'm aiming to sort of be on the podium for that one um, I'd love to stay in the top eight in the, in the long track GPs really and and for speed race, just to keep keep progressing. That's the main goal of that one. To, uh, yeah, and I know you've been uh, putting in, banging in the points for Paul that, at reserve, and uh, you've been enjoying the racing at Paul. Yeah, it's been it's been very tough. I'm not going to lie, but I've enjoyed every second of it. You know, the team have been very they helped me out with a lot of you know a little bit of advice here and there, and Nikolai Klintz taking me on has been quite a lot, and he's and he's helping me out with you know every bit of advice I need. So. You know, it's hard, but I'm enjoying every second of it and hopefully I can just keep progressing on and doing what I know I can do. OK, now just finally, James, so obviously you came into, uh, as, I, as I said, into adult racing and you've won an awful lot of titles already. Did it surprise you when you turned to adult racing just how quickly you were on the pace and how quickly you've got to world-class standard? Yeah, it has, you know. Obviously, I started the youth and it kind of, I sort of, you know, plugged along and it kind of got better and then jumped into the adults into 
jump in with that much success has been a real big shock and to hopefully you know it's hard to keep your feet on the ground but you know the team around me you know make sure I've got my feet on the ground firmly and just to keep working hard to keep progressing and now I'm now riding against the world's best so you know I've got to look for the little edge that you know possibly they haven't got that I can try and play on really. Well James best of luck for this season obviously last weekend you've already qualified for the European final so you're in a good position to defend your title so good luck with that good luck with the rest of the season and of course the world long track as well. Thank you I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Final. Everybody knows the system of a European final and people can complain about yeah, it's a bad system but it's just the way it is and uh, we all have to deal with the way it is and uh, I was lucky enough to, to win the title uh, three times consecutive and uh, uh, to be the first rider who has ever achieved that of course is a, is a great honour. And I would have loved to win it a fourth time consecutive, but yeah, it just wasn't really my day. I was struggling, couldn't get off the start right. I, 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 I didn't make one single gate where I was in, in, the, in the first bend first. And uh, there were other guys who were, in my opinion, better than me and uh, who, who, uh, who deserved to win it. But... Yeah, James just he, he he had some trouble during the day, and he just made an, a good start the first time, and uh, with the rerun he made a second good start. So in that particular race, in that particular final, he was he was the man to beat. So in in that way, he he uh, he deserved to win it. Well, you were uh, certainly put him back in his place last week at the semi-final uh, with a huge win at Bolkbrook, yeah. uh, which sets you up nicely for Hertigen later on in the season. So, obviously, looking to win that championship back again at Hertigen. I'm doing my best, and of course, uh, the World Championship is uh, starting again in Herxheim in, in May. But yeah, but last year I was struggling a bit with uh, you know because all the attention is is going towards you because of course you're the European champion and the long track world champion and everybody has big expectations and I'm not really the kind of person who likes to be on that uh, on, on that uh, placed on a, on a pedestal you know I just I just I'm just a normal guy and and that, that took off the joy of, of racing a little bit uh, last year and I have to say I'm uh, yeah I'm really enjoying it again now of course yeah, that's the fact that it's going so well uh, always brings it up a little bit more. But uh, yeah, we, we just keep on working. I've been working hard in the winter on the bikes. We changed some things. I, I, I BVE build a new engine, which is really working. And all the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall back together again now. So at the moment, it's really going well. But yeah, you never know. It, it might change around again. Well, it didn't look like it changed around last season, last week. So uh, best of luck, Yannick, with today. Obviously, it's brilliant whenever we see you in Britain. Thanks for coming over. Uh, we look forward to seeing you racing uh, on that lovely uh, swing field track here. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it too. And uh, of course, I'll be back in uh, August for the poacher. So, uh, yeah. Well, excellent news. Thank you. Yannick de Jong. We're uh, now catching up with uh, Carl Blythe, he's passenger to Mark Cossa. Mark's working real hard on the bike at the moment, so we've grabbed Carl for the time being to have a word. Uh, Carl, season started okay for you, but obviously that bad luck at Ledbury. Yeah, um, same happened at the end of last year. First one back this year, so we think we've hopefully ironed the problem out. We had a, I think we had a bad set of split links and they keep snapping at the back. So we've got a new chain, new design around the chain, so hopefully that'll sort it. Now there's more and more uh, outfits um, coming out that look more and more like the one that you guys ride. Uh, do you think that um, do you think that Mark and yourselves is there, is there any concern with lots of the development that's going on with outfits? No, Mark's building most of them. So <laughs> no, no, um, we'd like to beat everybody when they're the best. So if that's going to bring them forward, then fair play. Now, obviously, uh, we've got this meeting, which is the first time that we've got a big meeting here in uh, in the UK this season. Uh, but uh, looking to win that Masters title this year. Definitely, always looking to win that one. 
but this has been a bit of a bogey track for us for the Masters and various other meetings but what it will be will be on the day so it's the same for everyone just try a bit harder <laughs> So at the moment, as I said, Mark's working on the bike. What's been the uh, problem in practice? I see you pull up once uh, in practice. What's been the issue? That was chain, again, because it's a brand new chain. We, it was fine when we went out and it was really slack when we come in, so we just think because it's brand new, it's stretched a bit. So. When you've had a couple of things happen like that, when a chain goes twice in consecutive finals, does it run through your mind when you get on the bike for a race that it might go again, or are you able to just put it out of your mind? Uh, you just put it out of your head. If, if it happens, it happens. Then if it happens again and again, there's obviously something wrong. It happened twice, so we looked into it. We think we found the problem, and we've hopefully, hopefully sorted it. Time will tell. Today will tell. Today certainly will tell. Now, obviously, we've got uh, your... Um, Long-standing rivals Gareth Winterburn and Liam Brown here today. Um, they've said that they've not really done any sort of frame developments, engine developments in the winter to to get the edge. Uh, has anything been going on from your point of view? Not really. Only uh, the chain that we had problems with. So nothing really. There's a new bike to come out, but that's not ready yet. So we're just on the one we're winning on anyway. So. So when are we looking for the new outfit? Not a clue, not a clue. You'll have to speak to the other bloke. <laughs> well, he's busy at the moment, so we'll let you crack on. Um, good luck today. Good luck today, Mark, and good luck today, Carl. Thank you very much. Hope it all goes well. Cheers. <laughs> Morning, Bob. Morning.
difference for the driver is basically that you've got no engine braking. Now, we always talk an awful lot in Speedway about it's a sport with no brakes. Yeah, most people are using four-stroke engines, typically the X-Up engine, etc. And what they can do is they throttle off going into the bend, and the engine actually creates a bit of braking for them. So it does give the driver a lot more control. Now, the interesting thing about using a two-stroke, those of you that have ridden a two-stroke on the road will know that uh, you don't get any engine braking. So it's a very, very different concept. Will it work or not? I'm really not sure. And uh, it's easy to see that somebody is uh, playing around, dare I say, at uh, experimenting with a two-stroke engine. Well, those of the kids your program is 100%. I have got a couple of changes. Um, so while the youngsters are being given a chance to have a go around this fantastic circuit, I'll run through the program changes that I've been given. Um, if we go right to the front of the 500cc solo competitors, and, uh, the changes really are that we've been informed there's no Richard Hall, number 134. Now, unfortunately, both our reserves are not able to take part. So the extra reserve is number 71, the uh, eagle-eyed man amongst you might have noticed that he was out for practice, and that's Nigel Coates. So if we've got space down the bottom there of that is the rider, you can just bring his Nigel Coates in. Now he's but he will ride in the program wherever 134 appears. So replacing 134 is number 71, Nigel Coates. In the 1,000cc sidecars, just over the page, change of passenger for Paul Johnson, Sam Bond is the passenger for Paul Johnson. And number 33, a change of passenger for Tom Marvel. He's got Adam Cowper Smith riding as passenger later John Miller. Number 33, Tom Marvel. Adam Cowper Smith takes the ride for number 33. Now, over the page again, the 500cc Continental sidecars, as they're described this afternoon, they will be scoring as they do through the whole of the seven super series, which is seven rounds at a lot of the, um, big meetings during the season. So it's a, a competition that started last year, won very convincingly by Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. And the change really is, for those of you that keep your programs 100% accurate, their point scoring is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, not the usual two-point advantage for the win that we typically have in this sport. With the Continental Sidecars for the first time this afternoon. Now, yes, they all want to win this particular event, but also on this event, it is the start of the Super Series, or the Super 7 Series, I should say, seven rounds, and point scoring all the way through. So always good to get a good start for the series. I know they'll all be uh, keyed up and ready to go. There's quite a few things going on around the circuit. If you haven't brought food to drink with you, then there are the food stands just to my right between where the finishing line is and the pits. You'll also find um, the grasser stand there and riders. If you're thinking of renewing membership, they can do it today. Grasser are running a tombola, an age of injured riders fund, and they can be found between me and the food web. get themselves sorted out for this first race. Just along from the grass of sand, we've got uh, Bob's videos, so this any meeting last season, or even the season before, he's got all of them on DVD. And he's also got on his sand the story of grass track racing, 83 to 90. Was 25 pounds, but two of you is 5 pounds, so it's uh, brilliant book just by the uh, actual race. Red Helmet Colour with Mitch Gordon has got himself into the front. Well, they come off that top turn and he's keeping a very, very tight line. Now it is, in fact, Simon Baird has got himself to the front. Simon Baird leads from Mitch Gordon in that second spot. But Simon Baird looks to be making good this circuit at the moment. Yeah. 
far side, a very, very quick entrance into that top turn. But the rider in third, just looking to get second. We're picking them up for you as they come down past me. Diamond Baird, it is that leads from Dave Cavell and Cameron Gordon in that second spot. And they do look the quickest out there at the moment. They've found a way through on the inside as well. But Diamond Baird... keeps the speed on he's trying to force a gap on the inside and indeed he finds a gap and finds his way through and it's Dave Cavell to get to the front Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown have now got in on the action as well they've got come up from third place and already moving to second place so Josh Goodwin is this time as they come down past us and he's done that done it the hard way a really good win for Dave Cavell and Cameron Gordon followed home in second by Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown well I said they would be set up for this series this year they look to be full of competition at the moment so race one of the afternoon and that really has set the scene for the race in this afternoon the track's in superb condition and it's producing excellent racing already a great win there for Dave Cavell and Cameron Gordon. They certainly had to work for it. It's number 55 that goes in first place. In second spot, number three, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. In third place, number one, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. In fourth place, number four, Simon Baird and Ant Goodwin. In fifth place, number seven, Barry Bennett and Evan Hughes. And in sixth place, number six, Dinosland and Dennis Smith. The winning time was 133.93. 133.93. You should have for race one, 55, 3, 1, 4, 7, and 6. Sean Harvey does enough. 
He gets the win first time out. The afternoon, we're with the 500 Continental Sidecars, and remind you, as I will do during the day, that this is all towards the Super 7 Series, and this being the first round. The win in race two for number 72, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. Under a lot of pressure from the riders that finished in second place, number 68, Daniel Barrick and Mark Hopkins. In third place, number 73, James Hogg and Gary Coleman. In fourth place, number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. In fifth place, number 152, Aaron Vale and Stephen Vale. And in sixth place, number 65, Natasha Bartlett and Kyra Southgate. The winning time was 133.98. 133.98. So both those winning times in one and two, very, very close to each other. And you should have had the race two, 72, 68, 73, 77, 152, and 65. So race two, we move to the 500 solos. And uh, once again, the point scoring guys to get themselves into the finals. And then the finals, first across the line, deserve the winning. This time of the day, it's all about qualifying, it's all about getting the maximum points to be tried. You see out for the first time our European champion James Shane, up against Paul Cooper, Andrew Appleton, that's big next. You can see him on the grass, you can see him going well. You can forget, of course, that joining him on the lineup is Scott Craigwell, Mark Giles, Tim Noes. Difficult one to predict this one. Got set up right before their first race of the day. Get right, underway, you can see a lot of bikes rearing on that start. The Africa moving around the outside. I think that's James Shane that's on the inside of him as they come down past us, Andrew changes lines. It is James Shane that's leading from Andrew Apple in second, Paul Cooper holding third at the moment. And there's a change in that third place as Paul Cooper goes in. He's setting the pace as they come off that top turn. For the second time, Andrew Apple still sitting there in second. Oh, Zach Picknick that actually came through for that third place. <laughs> Looking for Paul Cooper, but at the moment, James Shane setting a cracking place. Paul Cooper back in fourth place. With Tim Nose being down. Zach pulls off on the far side, he's got engine problems by the look of it. He's going to get a finishing place, but it's not the finishing place he would have wanted. As the rest of the riders go past him, he pushes across the line. And very, very disappointing for Zach in his first ride this afternoon. So race three and the first of the 500 solos this afternoon and disappointment for Zach as you can all see there on the finishing line. The official result reads as a win for number 93 in very convincing form, James Shanes. In second place, number 22, Andrew Appleton. In third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. In fourth place, number two, Tim Nodes. And fifth place, number 26, Mark Giles. Sixth place goes to 122, Max Brown. 7th place, number 200, Scott Creswell, and 8th place there, he is credited with a place, so he will get some points from his first ride, 109, Zach Becknick. 117.67 the winning time, 117.67, you should have had 93, 22, 11, 2, 26, 122, 200, and 109.
So we stay with the 500 solo. And race four, seat out for the first time. Go to James Wright, Stephanie Chip, Ken Barker. Alex Dorby, Paul Hayes, Henry Powell, and Fox. They sort themselves out as they get round that first turn and come down past me for the first time and setting the early pace is number 69, James Wright. He's under pressure from Paul Hurry though. James Wright. James looking good at the moment as he comes down past us for the second time. It is Paul Hurry in, this, in pursuit. Well, number one is out there, that is Ben Barker by the look of it. So he's late getting there with his two friends. So all eyes on the front of this race as they go into the third last lap. James Wright it is, is setting the pace. Paul Hurry, no answer to him at the moment. But he's there in second place. Going for him this time as they come round. James has done enough. James Wright wins it. Paul Hurry's in second. Ben Barker gets third. And Alex Davies finishing in fourth. So race four then, and uh, I think a lot of you probably noticed my deliberate error all the way through that race because we've got a win for number 69. No dispute over that one, that's James Wright. Brilliant ride from him first time out, followed in second by number 86, Paul Hurry. In third, it's number seven, Steve Boxall. So my apologies to the Boxall camp, but uh, I was thinking it was number one all uh, the way through that race. In fourth place, number 96, uh, Alex Davies. In fifth place, number 92, Charlie Powell. In sixth place, number 130. And in seventh place, number 19. The winning time was 120.92. 120.92. Race four then, you should have 69, 86, 7, 96, 120, and 60. Places further down the line, but setting the early pace and getting the early lead is rider number six, Eddie Kennett. Great to see Eddie Kennett back here this afternoon. setting a cracking pace. We've got. Yannick Dion trying to close down on the other moment. Now Yannick has written this track many times. Over to the Kenzie European final last year. Or a and a good scrap developing between these two. Number 21, David Howe. He's no smell to call. He's sitting in third place. And you can see that Yannick Dion has gone through. So race five in your program and a very, very convincing win. He had to work hard for it though for Yannick Dijon. So you will put number 52 into that first place. In second spot, the early leader, Eddie Kennett, number six. In third place, number 21, David Howell. In fourth place, number 151, Rob Meir. In fifth place, number 126, Luke Harris. Sixth place, number 47, Callum Walker. Fifth, seventh place, number 15. And eighth place, number 71. The winning time was 118.84. 118.84, you should have had for race five, 52, six, 21, 151, 126, 47, 
CC sidecars for the first time this afternoon. This is their first leg ride. And looking at the lineup for race six, we've got Gareth Winterberg, Paul Winter, John Marvel, Paul Johnson, Colin Blackthorn, it's Tom Cockney. Yeah, Great start, they get underway, and you can already see that uh, Colin Blackthorn has made a very good start. Paul Whiteland chases after him into that first turn. Gareth Winterburn is the rider in third, it's gone very, very wide on the outside of Paul Whiteland. <laughs> Colin again has gone very wide on this finishing straight and these three outfits, nothing between them at the moment as Gareth Winterburn is uh, tempted to go around the outside once again and he looks to have the advantage this time for White and React though. And Paul Whiteman tries to follow him through as well. Paul Whiteman's got himself up in the second and looks to be attacking Gareth Winterburn. Gareth is trying to stay out wide on that front stop turn. That may be the second. Oh, they're sticking to the racing line, being that little bit wider coming out of that bottom turn. Again, you can see Gareth Winterburn has gone wide, but he's keeping the speed on being out there. And he drives hard down the So race six, the first of the thousand CC three cars and really setting the pattern for the racing today of great win for number 49, Gareth Winterburn and Liam Brown. In second place, number 92, Paul Whitelum and Alan Elliott. In third place, number 25, Colin Blackburn and Carl Pugh. In fourth place, number 29, Tom Costa and Ryan Barker. And in fifth place there, number 33, Tom Marvel and John Miller. The winning time, 140.70, 140.70. And I just remembered that uh, riding for Tom Marvel is Adam Cowper-Smith. And uh, he's passengering this afternoon. And so that's the first of the 1,000cc sidecars. We move to race seven and we see uh, further competitors in this one. John Hiscott, Will Penfold, Pete Colvin, Miles Simmons, Will Offen and Joe Mark. making the best of it. Pete Colvin is up there as well as John Hiscock. That's the three as they go into that first turn, but Miles Simmons it is that breaks away from those two having a good scrap in second spot. <laughs> and Kevin Woodley that are setting the pace as they come round this fifth end. Deciding which is the best line to take. Sorting it out as they come past me. John Hiscock up in second place. Pete Colvin in third. Joe Moss trying to get up into contention with those two as they go into that top turn. But it is Miles Simmons and Kevin Woodley that are getting away. Opening up. 
So race eight and uh, perhaps an interesting one to see the time. I mentioned that race six and seven were very similar times. Number 37 it is, Mark Costa and Carl Blythe that take the win in a winning time of 138.24, 138.24, so they've knocked a couple of seconds off. In second place to them, number 15, Matt Fumbrella and Gareth Williams. In third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Terry Saunders. In fourth place, number 12, Neil Owen and Jason Farwell. In fifth place, number 16, Simon Hill and Roland Broomfield. The winning time, as I mentioned, 138.24, 138.24. You should have for race 8, 37, 15, 24, 12 and 16. So over the page we go and we go back to uh, the Continental Sidecars. Cars are already over there on that star line. Remind you that number 72, Sean Hogg and Danny Hogg. Sean Hogg? Sean Harvey even, and Danny Hogg. Number 72, they ride there to win first time out. Up against Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown, and James Hogg and Gary Coleman. They both had second place in first time out. Simon Bird has made a very good start once again. Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown have had to take the wide line to get round the outside of them. You remember that it's a first leg line. Right. Yeah, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown trying to get the win from him. Oh, Josh has got himself to the front. And I have a feeling that Simon Bird and Anne Goodwin have come under attack from Sean Harvey and Danny Hall to sit there in that third place, but already they've closed right up on the back wall. Yeah. 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 Getting away from them. Consolidating their lead at the moment as they go into the last lap, but watch what's happening in second place. It's Simon Bird and Anne Goodwin have responded. They're trying to keep Sean Harvey and Danny Hall at bay. Sean Harvey's looking for a row on the inside and he finds a gap. And they will see the checker flag as they come down this time towards us. It's a good win, second time out. Poor Josh could win. And Liam Brown. Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg have to settle for that second place. And after a terrific start, Simon Bird and could win finishing third. Race 9 then, we're back to the uh, second leg of the Continental Sidecars and it's a win for number 3, his first this afternoon, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Number 3 it is that goes in first place and number 72 in second, Sean Harvey and Danny Hogg. In third place, number 4, Simon Baird and Anthony Goodwin. In sub fourth place, number 73, James Hogg and Gary Coleman. In fifth place, number 77, Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett. And in sixth place, number six, Dinah Lund and Dennis Smith. Oh, I 
an early leader and it looks like Mitch Godden coming off that top turn. It is indeed Mitch Godden and Paul Smith that lead in second place. Number 68, Daniel Barrett and Mark Hopkins. Now I feel so wet for number 65, Wade Cavell. Got the win. They've got a lot of work to do if they're going to make that two out of two, but Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith that really do look to be in control. Number 68, Dan Barrett and Mark Hopkins still there in second. Real scratch on the first place. the last lap flag being made ready. It is Mitch Gordon that's going to be pleased to see that one as he leads comfortably now. Uh, Dave Cavell it is that's got the best of that third place. <laughs> one convincing move as he comes towards the checkered flag. He'll be pleased to take the win. Daniel Barrett and Mark Hopkins get second, and Dave Cavell and Cameron Godden take that third place. So, race 10 and a very convincing win for outfit number one, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. In second place, number 68, Daniel Barrett and Mark Hopkins. In third place, number 55, Dave Cavell and Cameron Gordon. In fourth place, number 152, Aaron Vale and Steve Vell. In fifth place, number 65, Natasha Bartlett and Kyra Southgate. In sixth place, number 7, Barry Bennett and Evan Hughes. The winning time was 130.36, 130.36. You should have had to race 10, number 1, number 68, 55, 152, 65 and 7. If I go back to the first leg ride, you might remember that Yannick de Jong worked hard and eventually got the win. Well, also, from start to finish, we've got Jen Shane going in this one. He had a win first time out. Their times were very comparable. And uh, getting in the mix amongst them, they've got Paul Hurry, Paul Cooper, Zach Christmas, hopefully he's still in the top of that first leg ride.
Thank you. 